Hi, my name is Piper Rathgeb and my group's topic is transgender visibility. For my current events vlog, I'm going to be discussing fatal violence against transgender people and the government's involvement and response in America and in Iraq. My American article is Fatal Violence Against the Transgender and Gender Nonconforming Community in 2022 from the Human Rights Campaign, America's Largest LGBTQ Plus Civil Rights Organization. And my other article is The Deadly Violence Against LGBTQ People in Iraq from the Human Rights Watch, an organization that defends human rights worldwide. Published on March 23rd, 2022 by Rasha Yunz, a senior researcher with the LGBTQ plus rights program. Transgender people are constantly facing discrimination and physical and sexual violence every day. The ho- they fight for housing, employment, and even the right to use communal and public spaces. There needs to be a stronger legislation and persecution to end trans violence and give justice to trans victims. My first article opens up with a disclaimer that their numbers are most likely lower than reality because many stories either go unreported or are misreported. In 2022, 38 transgender people and nonconforming people were reportedly fatally shot or killed in violent means. All 38 victims are named and pictured in the article along with their age, the date and um, and location their lives were taken, and often a description of how their family and friends will remember them. The HRC says some of the perpetrators are yet to be identified. My second article on the deadly violence against LGBT people in Iraq opens by saying she has interviewed 54 LGBT uh, Iraqis who have survived violence at the hands of Iraqi armed groups and police. She says of these 54 people, some of them also had intimate knowledge of other LGBT Iraqis who have been killed or disappeared by armed groups due to their gender presentation or perceived um, sexual orientation. The Human Rights Watch documented eight abductions Um, eight attempted murders, four extrajudicial killings, 27 instances of sexual violence, 35 threats to rape and kill, and 42 cases of online targeting by armed units with the Popular Mobilization Forces or PMF groups working against LGBT people in Iraq under the Prime Minister's control. Similarly to the last article, this article comes with the disclaimer that the numbers are much most likely much higher, but perpetrators are not held accountable. Yoon says that there are no laws protecting the Iraqi LGBTQ plus community, but there are laws protecting the perpetrators. The longer this continues, the less likely people will report the murders and the violence against transgender people. Yoon says all the people I interviewed that they said that they would not report violence against them to the authorities because they are terrified that they would be targeted again, dismissed by the police, or detained. The more this happens, the more we lose the grip we have on ending it, the more we lose sight of the reality and urgency of this issue. Each time a perpetrator goes unpunished or is even encouraged by the government, there will be more violence against transgender people because perpetrators can assume that they will get away with it. A hot topic right now is the decriminalization of sex work. The human rights campaign says the victims transgender gender nonconforming status may put them at risk in other ways such as forcing them into unemployment poverty homelessness and survival sex work the criminalization of sex workers leaves transgender people vulnerable to physical and sexual abuse exploitation and neglection of basic health services the decriminalization of sex work is another law that could protect trans people we see a difference between the victims common perpetrators and the two articles most of the american murders correlated with intimate partner violence or police brutality the iraqi government is actively working against their lgbtq plus community with specialized armed forces murdering their citizens for their perceived gender identity or sexual orientation Yoon says the ending of violence in iraq should start by investigating all reports of violence by armed groups or other others against all victims, including LGBT people, and publicly condemning all such violence. The justice system should prosecute and appropriately punish those found responsible. The Human Rights Watch says governments have an obligation to respond to foreseeable threats to the life and bodily integrity of people, including by addressing patterns of violence against specific groups of people. The United States is falling short of its international obligations to remedy the structural conditions that give rise to anti-transgender violence and to provide assistance and deliver justice to individuals when violence occurs. A big, a big step towards ending trans violence would be to pass stronger legislation to protect trans lives and hold perpetrators accountable.